A public library in Oregon picks a fight with, of all organizations, Liberty Council, refusing to allow Christian meetings in the library. I'm Matt Barber, Vice President of Liberty Council Action. Joining me again today in studio is Steve Crampton, a Senior Vice President with Liberty Council and General Counsel with Liberty Council. Uh, Steve, our friends over at, uh, at Citizen Link, uh, part of Focus on the Family, wrote a great article titled Oregon Library Bans Christian Group. And they, they start off by saying, it's not unusual for religious liberty law firms to get involved when people are told their Christian faith can't be expressed in public. But in a new federal lawsuit, a public library in Oregon didn't deny a group of individuals access to one of its meeting rooms because they'd be discussing issues from a biblical perspective. They denied a religious liberty law firm itself, one that has a stellar track record on these types of cases, no less. And that, of course, is us, Liberty Council. What is going on here, and how does this public uh, library, as an agent of the government, right. where do they get off thinking that they can uh, overtly violate the First Amendment and discriminate against Christians? Well, let me start with what we were looking to do. You know, they got meeting rooms that they uh, readily uh, let community groups use free of charge. You have uh, meetings about your Sierra Club gatherings, about civic and educational uh, uh, offerings and so forth. Well, Liberty Council wanted to bring a speaker in and educate some of the young people in the community about our civic values and how, uh, in fact, the founders really approached all of this from this pesky religious viewpoint. And uh, the library has a clause in their uh, policy that exempts use for religious services or proselytizing. So it's just right there in black and white, and they deemed uh, our use a religious service. And uh, God forbid, we might even proselytize, you know, insofar as people might come to uh, agree with us. And so uh, they just stiff-armed us uh, out of hand. Now, ironically enough, uh, Justice Alito, in an opinion he wrote when he was on the Third Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, it observed that really all groups proselytize. It's kind of what you do. You want others to join your group, right? Mm -hmm. Proselytizing is nothing more than recruiting, ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. So in one broad read, and since the term is not even defined in the Seaside Public Library's policy, they could actually bar almost anybody because anytime you have a group meeting and you might say, hey, you know, we're the Girl Scouts and you might want to join up. Now, not you, Matt, because you're not a girl, but <laughs> other, you know, girls might yeah, want to join. Yeah. That could be considered a proselytizing. So even they could be barred. But, of course, the way they really apply it, and we are talking uh, the left coast here in Oregon, is Liberty Council. Let me think. Oh, they're a religious. They're a Christian group, aren't yeah. they? And if you're coming in here, even if you're talking about the same topic that other groups might address, you're going to do it from a Christian perspective, we can't have that in our library. Now, now, what's interesting about this is you you mentioned this kind of carte blanche. Uh, they've given themselves basically the authority to ban anybody they want to based on on viewpoint. What, uh, however, you know the Girl Scouts, uh, as you mentioned, as an example, or uh, the Sierra Club, as you yes. mentioned, as an example. They don't have a, uh, an amendment to the United States Constitution, which expressly says, uh, oh, oh, yeah, in government, you can't discriminate against the Sierra Club. You yes. can't discriminate against. And it happens to be the first amendment of the United States Constitution, rather than, as some of our atheist and anti-Christian friends might suggest, uh, that the idea that our frame, the uh, founding fathers came here for freedom from religion. The reality right. is that the central idea in, in the inception of the United States was was the freedom of religion, getting away from from uh, uh, the strong arm of, a, of an overreaching centralized government saying, you know, you will, you must. That's why we have the First Amendment. So the Constitution expressly forbids the government, in this case, this uh, Oregon library, from doing exactly what we're doing. And beyond that, case law is yes. strong. This one, it's, Steve, this one isn't even close, is it? What you might call the no-brainer clause yeah. here. Uh, yeah. But, you know, the, the truth is, Matt, you consider the common man's understanding of the First Amendment today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it that we find the First Amendment being used against? Uh, I, I am off to depositions in, in a day's time uh, in a case the ACLU and Freedom From Religion has brought to remove any vestige of the mention of religion from our public schools. It really is the freedom from religion in that context, isn't it? And with regard to the free exercise clause, while the establishment clause and the free exercise clause are often referred to as the first freedom, religious freedom, 
the reality of the treatment of those clauses by the courts is they are really treated with disrespect, far more so than the likes of free speech. So there is a, a uh, disparity among those clauses in our First Amendment, and folks like the uh, public library in Seaside have seized upon that and feel like, really, open season on Christians, yeah. that's fair game. As, after all, these aren't Muslims coming in who we normally would respect. You know, These are just Christians. So you, you see that kind of playing out uh, all around the country. And so these guys, in a way, are only taking the uh, pablum that the U.S. Supreme yes. Court is feeding. Yeah, the misinformation, they? the disinformation that has been fostered by groups like, particularly, and probably uh, foremost, the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union, uh, the founder of the ACLU. CLU Roger Baldwin, who famously said, quote, communism is the goal. So we're not using the hyperbole, uh, you know, the communi- communism. This is what the ACLU was founded on, the That's principles right. of communism. Uh, one central principle of communism being, of course, the abolition of religion. Uh, Karl Marx, the father of communism, saying uh, that uh, communism is the uh, the uh, opiate of the masses fa- and, and saying that uh, for true happiness, uh, religion must be abolished. The ACLU takes that seriously, even mm-hmm. in their own promotional materials. And Steve, I'll ask you to comment on this. They advocate religious discrimination. Here's what the ACLU claims. Quote, the message of the Establishment Clause is that religious activities must be treated differently from other activities to ensure against governmental support for religion. Well, that is discrimination, is it not? Absolutely is. And see, the scary thing about this is you're in Oregon. Um, The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals controls out there. And the Ninth Circuit mm-hmm. has taken that very proposition. You know, it's almost as if they are reading from the ACLU playbook, Matt, and have applied that and recognized and condoned government entities that do treat religion differently and discriminatorily. Mm-hmm. So Oregon's mindset here is somewhat understandable, if disturbing nonetheless. And so, uh, you know, that's why groups like ours exist, is to kind of set them straight on this kind of thing. we got to go in there. Frankly, we might find ourselves having to set a, set a federal judge straight as well. But, I mean, you're absolutely right that this should be a no-brainer, and yet here we find ourselves basically swimming upstream in uh, situations like this and in courts like we face in the Ninth Circuit. Well, and, and progressives, you'll hear the drumbeat. There's no war on Christianity. There's no war on religion. Yet we literally uh, at Liberty Council, we have to turn away uh, a case after case after case simply because we don't have the resources right. to handle every type of overt uh, discrimination, anti-religious bigotry that we see right. come across uh, our desks. Uh, but as you point out, you know, the Ninth Circuit, this will have to go through the affectionately often referred to as the Ninth Circus Court of Appeals, the most overturned uh, federal uh, right. circuit in, in uh, the United States, and that's uh, for good reason. I, I suspect and expect that it'll have to make its way through all that nonsense first, and it may ultimately go to the Supreme Court, or this Oregon Library can can do the right thing. This is not even close. They it's are not even completely close. out of step here in violation of the First Amendment. Matt, the, a few years ago, we had a series of these cases and just mowed down library after library that had similar clauses. I would encourage our uh, listeners, maybe check your own library's policy. You'll be surprised how many libraries have clauses similar to, if not identical, to this little exception in in Oregon. Uh, I anticipate we'll have to take this show on the road again and again Mm -hmm. out uh, on our left coast swing in order to kind of set the record straight here. So it's not all that uh, uncommon. Quickly, where are we on the case? Where does it go from here? We uh, have filed our motion for preliminary injunction, so we're hopeful for a quick hearing there. We may have news for you in two or three months uh, if the library doesn't cave right out of the bag. Okay, and and, and I and I hope that they will, that they'll do the right thing, uh, that they'll get the message, you know, in this uh, c- cultural climate of anti-Christian discrimination that those controlling the reins of government has kind of put in place with Obamacare and other things. I think that uh, some government entities feel empowered to trample the the First Amendment, the United States Constitution, Liberty Council, we're not going to let them get away with it. That's what we're here to do, and uh, we uh, can only do so with your support. Now, Liberty Council is a nonprofit uh, law firm. We provide service, legal services free of charge, so we exist uh, based on the gifts and generosity of uh, people like you, people listening right now. To learn how you can uh, become part of the Liberty Council team, go to lc.org or give us a call at one 800 671 
1776. Stand with us as we stand in defense of religious liberty.